Hello and welcome to part two in this video series by Adrian Davey from Pure Electrical Training. In this video, we will discuss safety precautions before disconnecting the earthing system, what the term parallel ways actually means using visual aids, before moving on to how we test these cables using test method two, leading up to the third part of the video on fault finding. I will be continuing using these books from the IET as they are the ones that you will have access to throughout your career. And we're going to be focusing on continuity of the earthing conductor and the main protective bonding conductors, as I've covered protective conductors of circuits in other videos within this inspection and testing series. This is page 41 of the IET Guidance Notes 3, which attempts to provide more clarification on the regulations within BS7671, as initial verification is only covered over six to seven pages and provides basic details on the requirements, not steps on how to actually carry out the tests. As a result, GM3 aims to go into more detail to enable you to understand what you are being asked to confirm. Effectively, regulation 411.3.1.1 requires that a circuit using ADS, aka automatic disconnection of the supply, as its protection against electric shock, must have a circuit protective conductor, aka CPC, run to each point in the wiring and at each accessory. There is an exception to this rule, and that is made for a lamp holder having no exposed conductive parts and being suspended from such a point, like our humble friend, the plastic ceiling rose. You'll also notice that this references regulation 643.2, which is as follows. Continuity of conductors and connections to exposed conductive parts and extraneous conductive parts needs to be verified by measuring its resistance and proving that it is continuous. Click the link in the corner of the screen now if you're interested in watching my video on continuity of ring final circuit and specifically end-to-end -end testing. Or click the link in the other corner for a detailed explanation of the figure of eight test on a ring final circuit, as both have proved extremely popular with new and experienced electricians. In this video, we're going to check our earthing conductor and main bonding conductors using the test method two, which is often referred to as the long lead method, as you may need an extension to your test leads like this one. In the newest edition of GM3, page 60 talks about the possibility of test readings being affected by something we call parallel paths, which we'll talk about shortly. But the thing I want you to draw your attention to is highlighted in red, and that is, you will have to disconnect one end of your conductor to remove the parallel paths. Now, if you think back to part one in this video, you will remember why this would be incredibly dangerous. If you haven't seen that video already, then please click the link in the corner of the screen now, as that will help you gain a basic understanding of how main equipotential conductors work. So let's consider some health and safety considerations, as well as some faulty to electricity at work regulations 1989. Before we start anything, the first thing we do in any situation is a risk assessment, identify the hazards, who might be harmed, and how. Evaluate the risks and plan the solutions because prevention is always better than cure. Document and implement those RAMs. And then don't forget that a risk assessment is a living document and needs to change whenever a new hazard is introduced or the current assessment changes. This could be something as simple as another tradesperson walking in the vicinity. Which means we need to continually assess the hazards around us and change the risk assessment accordingly. This is a basic risk matrix and you multiply the level of danger the hazard poses by the likelihood of that hazard happening. So if we look at removing all or part of the earthing system, then the hazard of electric shock in a fault condition would be high. You could argue that the likelihood of that hazard happening from a fault which occurs at the same time as you having the earthing system disconnected would be quite low. So the risk would be a five. But you need to take into account that if the earthing was disconnected and there was a fault to earth, then the likelihood of receiving an electric shock would now increase as your earthing system around the installation could be live and make this an intolerable risk. If you remember back to this picture from part one in this video, that is a lot of metal work that could become live and pose a very serious risk to life. So we need the current to flow easily and for the protective devices to operate quickly. This means that you have to ensure you remember to safely isolate the installation and test that the electrical hazard has been removed. If you want to check your knowledge on safe isolation and ensure you pass your assessments, then watch part one of my video that will talk you through the why, what, when and where. The link is on the corner of the screen now. Part two will talk you through the process and I've put together a simple flowchart to help you. The link for that is now on the screen. 
We often hear the term parallel ways, but what does that actually mean? This diagram represents what would happen if you were testing a main bonding conductor between the main earth terminal, or MET, and the gas pipe if there was nothing else connected. The electrons would flow out of the negative terminal of the MFT, along the test lead, through the main bonding conductor, and into the MET, before travelling back into the positive terminal of the batteries within the MFT and completing the circuit. If we were to look at this in the simplified model, then we would have the following arrangement. Here you can see the MET connected to the main gas supply by the main bonding conductor. You will know from my video on how the MFT works that the voltage is 4.4 volts nominal and the current limited to 200 milliamps. The electrons flow out of the low ohm resistance tester along the test lead to the bonding clamp, through the main bonding conductor to the MET and then back into the low ohm resistance tester creating a circuit but due to the resistance of the circuit, some of the current has been slowed down. The meter can measure and calculate the resistance using Ohm's law. Because the main bonding conductor has a low resistance due to the size of the conductor, electrons can flow more easily, which is why I represented this by using double arrows. If we have an appliance connected to the MET through the appliance's electrical supply, in a full condition, we now have a parallel path for the electrons to flow down to the MET through the CPC in Terminal 4 supplying the appliance. If we do not remove the main bonding conductor from the bonding clamp, then when we connect the low ohm resistance tester between the main earth terminal and the bonding clamp on the gas pipe, we are also moving the electrons in the CPC of the boiler supply circuit, which is what would happen in a fault condition. The increase of electrons moving through the appliance's CPC is indicated on the low ohm resistance tester by an artificially low resistance reading. If we bring that back to the simplified model, then we would have the following arrangement. We now have a parallel path for the electrons to flow down. This time, the electrons have two paths that they can travel down, although more can still travel down the main bonding conductor due to the bigger CSA. So why is that a problem? Because surely that means the resistance is lower, and that is a good thing. After all, we were told the lower the resistance in a healthy circuit, the better. Well, that is true, but what happens if there is a break in the main bonding conductor and we no longer have continuity? Our low ohm resistance tester will display a resistance reading as the circuit is still completed through the CPC, but it means we potentially no longer have the protection to the extraneous metal gas pipe that we discussed in the first part of this video. If we were to look back at this simplified model and think back to the first part of this video, then you should now be able to appreciate the danger of not disconnecting a parallel path. The meter still reads continuity even if we don't have any on the main bonding conductor due to the break in the cable, but because of the parallel path provided by the appliance's supply, the electrons can find a path back to the battery source in the meter. The only way to prove the bonding cable is intact is to disconnect the main bonding conductor and test the cable purely by itself. Now personally, I suggest disconnecting the main bonding conductor at the pipe end so that you don't get confused with which bonding cable you are testing as they probably won't be labelled in the distribution board. This way you are definitely testing the correct cable and can just connect the low ohm resistance tester as shown in this diagram. Now, when you test the conductor, the electrons can only flow in the main bonding conductor and not through any other parallel conductors. If we bring that back to the simplified model, we can now see that because the main bonding conductor is disconnected, the electron flow is only possible through the main bonding conductor, as this is the only path back to the batteries in the MFT. If you had a break in the cable, the electrons would not flow, as there is no other way for the electrons to get back to the MET, and you would get an out of range reading on your low ohm resistance tester greater than 99.9 .9 ohms. The on the simplified model would look like this. As you can see, the circuit is now completely broken and the electrons cannot flow, so the meter displays an out-of-range test reading. If we consider multiple appliances connected on the simplified model, then you will see that we would have multiple parallel ways through each appliance connected to the MET and the gas and or water pipe lowering the resistance reading measured, which means you cannot rely on a low reading to confirm that the main bonding conductor is continuous. Using the reciprocal method you were shown at college for calculating resistors in parallel, we can calculate a resistance of 0.03 ohms. As this diagram proves, 
Even with that main equipotential bonding conductor broken, we would still measure a reading of suitably low resistance and could believe that the installation is electrically safe. If you remember back to part one in this video, then you'll remember why this is incredibly dangerous and puts people's lives at risk. If you haven't seen that video already, then please click the link in the corner of the screen now. Well, that's it for part two of this video on continuity of protective conductors. In part three of this video, we will move on to typical faults on a bonding cable, how to ensure tight terminations, how to find and recognize high readings using visual animations, and finally record those results in your AM2. Don't forget that this video can count towards your off-the-job training for your apprenticeship or just for your own CPD, and please ensure that you like, share, and subscribe so that everyone can benefit from this content. Thank you, and take care.